Hey, hey, what is going on everyone? And welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Now in today's video, as well as probably the next couple of videos, I wanna show you how to get started with creating your own custom server using the Node.js backend framework. Now the reason why I'm choosing Node is because it's extremely easy to get everything up and running. It doesn't take more than just a couple of lines to bring up your own local server. Now, what exactly do we want to accomplish in today's video? Well, I wanna bring you to the browser over here and at this local host slash user, this URL, we are pretty much returning a list of users and each one of these users have a couple of properties, ID, first name, and last name, right? So this is pretty simple and straightforward and by the end of today's video, you will also have a server that can render out a list over here. Now, in order to get started, you wanna head on over to the Node.js website, right over here, nodejs.org, and install one of these two packages over here. It doesn't really matter which one, but uh, doing this allows us to use NPM, which is the Node Package Manager, and this allows us to install the necessary libraries to make Node.js really, really easy to use. All right, so once you have this package installed, let's head on over to the terminal and create our very first Node.js project right now. Okay, so in this portion of the video, I would like to show you how to create a brand new directory inside of your computer that we can use for our Node.js project. And then I'll show you how to use NPM to initialize our directory. Okay, so with that being said, let's head into terminal, which is this window. And let's see, pwd for my path. And this is my current path. It's obviously going to look a little bit different for you. But anyhow, let's go ahead and create a brand new directory. I'm going to call this Node.js and REST API. That seems like a pretty good name for me. And here is my directory. You can call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter so much. Let's change into that directory. I'm just hitting tab to have it autocomplete for me. And inside of this directory, we don't have anything. LS just helps you list out the contents of your folder. And the first thing we would like to do is to maybe execute npm init, right? So we can do this inside of this terminal, but a better option is to actually use an editor that will help us kind of create our files and create our project a lot easier. So what I'm going to do is to execute open and dash a. I'm going to use the atom editor and I'm going to specify the current directory. And let me just hit enter right over there. And here we go, we have our Atom editor opened up right on the left side, and we're currently open inside of the Node.js REST API directory. All right, so if you don't have Atom, you can head on over to Atom.io and hit the download button over here. And basically, Atom is the hackable text editor for the 21st century. I really like using Atom because it's uh, very user friendly and I think the, uh, the style of the editor is very modern. Okay, so something else that's nice about Atom is that you can actually launch terminal inside of this editor itself. And the way that you would do that is to go to preferences and inside of settings, you can head on over to here, type in, I believe it's terminal, hit enter and install this Platformio IDE terminal and I already have it installed. And once you kind of have it installed, you have this button on the bottom left that allows you to bring up a new terminal over here. So this is exactly the same thing as the terminal that we were just working with. Uh, but you know, you can execute all of the behavior inside of this window instead, which will make my life a lot easier in terms of recording today's video. Okay, so what do I want to do inside of my uh, Node.js REST API directory is to initialize it with npm init. And so what exactly does this command do? Well, it helps you create this package JSON file for your uh, Node.js project. So it wants you to enter some things such as package name for your directory. So let's just take in all of the default values with enter, 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 enter. And at the very end here, it tells you that it's going to help you create this package JSON file inside of the current directory and inside of there, we'll have the name of your project, the version, and so on and so forth. And hit enter one more time. And if you type in ls, you'll see that we have package JSON over there, as well as under this root directory thing, we have package JSON. And this is pretty much what that file is uh, going to consist of. And it's not so important what these values are if you're going to throw away this project, but uh, it's kind of important that you have this file inside of your directory. And so the first thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and install something called Express. 
So you can say npm install express and hopefully that'll work. So it's going to download express and it's going to list express as one of the dependencies of your project. And in addition to this little bit of a change here, it also installs all these node modules that Express will have to use to kind of get up and running. So there's actually a lot of stuff in node modules, but that's not so important for today's video. Just understand that we have a bunch of files in there. Okay, so now that we have Express installed, the next thing we want to do is to create a new file to launch our application server for Node.js. So just type in new file over here. I'm going to use app.js. You can call it whatever you want, uh, as long as you end it with JS, I think that's the important part. And let's try to get our application server up and running, right? So load our app server using express somehow. So how exactly do we do this? Well, first we have to import a library called express. And the way you want to import it is to declare a new variable called const and express, and we will require the library of express like so. Now, the next thing you want to do is to create a second variable called app or whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. You want to kind of set it equal to a new instance of express. Okay, so finally, you just need one more line to start up your application server. And so what you want to do is to say app and you want to say listen. And the thing that you want to specify in here is the port that you want to listen on. That might be a little bit confusing, but over here inside of my dummy server, I'm on port 3002. You can say, you know, maybe 3003 or 3004, it doesn't matter uh, over here. And uh, the next thing you want to do is to specify a callback function. And let's just use the paren paren, this fat arrow thing, and just type in some code over here. So console log, and we'll say, you know, server is up and listening. Uh, let's see, 303 is the port number over there. You can declare a variable for that, but you know, it doesn't matter so much. I'm going to hit save. And now we have our app.js file saved. So the next thing you want to do to start up this file is to go back inside of terminal. You can use this guy or use the good old traditional terminal. Doesn't matter. Uh, down here, inside of your directory, we're inside of node.js rest API, ls, we have app.js. We can say node and space app.js. You'll see that server is up and listening on 3003. Okay, so this guy, what this means is that we can now ping the server at localhost 3003. So just copy that. Go inside of your browser, maybe I hit a new tab, and you'll see that uh, we have a server that's up, but it just you know says that cannot get the root directory over here, or the root route is what this is called. And the reason why it's saying that is because this is the root over here, because we haven't typed anything and we haven't specified anything for the root route for our application server. So why don't we go ahead and do that right above the listen line? Okay, so in order to specify the root, you just have to say app.get for a get request. So get, and you'll say, let's see, slash for the root. And the next parameter that you wanna specify for the get request is how you wanna handle your request. So this is a callback function that you need to specify with two parameters. The first one is the actual request that comes from, let's say your browser. And the next parameter is the response that you want to give this particular get request. So this callback function will specify another fat arrow over there and brace, brace. And inside of here, you can do anything you want to respond to your request. Let's say console.log for a print message, and you know, responding to root route. And the way you want to respond is to say a res, and you can send anything to this request you want. So let's say hello from root, and let's hit the save. And now we just specified a route at the, let's say, root. And if we try to refresh this, you would kind of expect it to work. 
But uh, because we haven't restarted our application server, it doesn't know that we registered this root route. So why don't we hit Control C to stop our server. And now we can say node or just hit up and we'll have node app.js refresh this root and we've now successfully implemented the root route and it says hello from root, right? So that's pretty much how you set up your express server. It doesn't take a whole lot of code. And I think we have at the very most here about 10 lines and pretty simple and extremely straightforward. Okay, so what do we want to move on to next? Well, you notice how every time we add code in here, we have to kind of hit Control C, restart this thing with node app.js. And that's kind of annoying and uh, something that you definitely want to remove from your workflow as a backend developer if possible. So let me show you how to kind of make this a little bit easier. And what I'm going to use is something called nodemon. It's basically a daemon service that will watch for changes inside of your JS files and then it'll restart your uh, app server whenever necessary. So the way that you would get nodemon to work is to say npm and you can use i for install and g for global and you want to say nodemon like that but I don't think that works uh, if you don't specify sudo. So this will give you root permissions to install nodemon properly. So hit enter, that should be good. Punch in your password and it'll install nodemon for you. And just a little bit, it downloads some packages from npm and hopefully it installed correctly, updated. It'll probably, it'll probably say installed successfully for you. And so once you have that, you can say node mon and app.js and you'll see that you have your application server up and running. You can refresh this guy and you'll see exactly what's going on. Uh, responding to root route from this message over there. And let's say we create another route, right? So you see on this dummy server that I have on 302, I have users as one of my routes. Let's say I declare another route, so git and say slash users. My callback will be request response, fat arrow, brace, brace, and we'll say response dot send and see node mon auto updates when I save this file. So I'm going to hit save, you'll see the little changes on the terminal right over there. So just res uh, restarted due to the changes and now if I re, let's see, reload this page, we see hello from root. If I type in the new route of users and hit enter, you'll see that known mod kind of automatically updated this server with the users route that I typed right on line 10. Okay, so now that we have our application server up and running and NodeMon is automatically updating uh, whenever we make changes to AppJS, I would like to now show you how we can return some JSON for our user's route, kind of like this over here. And this is actually very, very easy to do. And we just want to modify uh, the route of users to return some JSON. So the way that you would do this is to say res.json and you just want to pass in some kind of variable over here. And the way I'm going to do this is to declare a user up at the very top. So let's say var user1 and we'll declare it as some kind of JSON object or a dictionary. I can't remember exactly what this is called, but let's say first name and this guy will say, you know, Stefan. And over here, the second property will be last name and I'll specify a string of curry. And this is my user one. You can just pop that into the JSON method call. And let me remove this on line 15 by commenting it out. I'm gonna hit the save. You'll see the changes down below. And if I head back over to the see port 303, refresh this, you'll see that I automatically get my JSON object inside of this route get request. Now, if you wanted to return more than one user, you can declare a second user over here. So it's probably better if you declare your variables as constant if you don't want to change them. So user two, and we will use the exact same thing as that. So paste that in there. Uh, let's see, another basketball player that I am a fan of is Kevin Durant. And you can try to say user two in here, but that's not gonna work because 
this doesn't exactly make any sense in terms of JSON. So if I save and refresh this, you'll get a error down here and it says, let's see, invalid status code object, object thing. So you can't exactly do this and what you gotta do is to use a bracket instead. So this is a list of users. You can now refresh this and you'll get a list of these users, Stephen Curry and also Kevin Durant like so. And that's pretty much how you set up a a uh, route called users to kind of process your get request. And that's pretty much all I wanted to show you in today's video. But if you want to learn more about Node.js, let me show you one more tip as to developing a custom backend server. So every time you process one of these get requests, you actually want your server to log exactly what's going on. And this might be a little bit confusing if you've never done this before, but let me install something called Morgan, which is going to help me see what my requests are. So I'm going to control C and exit out of the server. And let's say npm install and let's say Morgan. So let's hit enter. And Morgan is going to be installed as a dependency for my project. You see it showing up over there, right? So how exactly do I want to use Morgan? Well, I believe all I have to do is say const like that and Morgan, and we'll say equals require, and we will import Morgan like so. And for my app object, you can say use, and I believe it's Morgan, Morgan. And what do I want to do? I believe you can say short, and we'll just, save our project and now I'm going to say node mon and let's say app.js. Okay, so everything looks good and we are now up and running on port 3003 again. I'm going to refresh this page and you'll see down at the bottom, every time I hit my server, you'll see that it, Morgan is going to help log exactly what kind of request we have and how long it took to process that request. So one other thing that you can do with Morgan is to say combined and let me hit save, it'll refresh and reload this page over here. Now, if you use the combined logger level, uh, you'll get the full information as to what type of request it is. So, you know, the time of the request, what kind of computer I'm using with the OS. So I'm on High Sierra, uh, Apple WebKit, and we are on the Chrome browser with the version down here, so Chrome. Uh, major, minor version, I don't know exactly what Safari is doing over there, but uh, that's what Morgan will allow us to kind of read in terms of what our requests are doing and where they're coming from. And this is super helpful uh, so that you know exactly what's going wrong if something uh, problematic occurs. All right, everyone, that's going to wrap it up for today's video on how to get started with the Node.js framework. And hopefully through this very, very short video, you see how easy it is to start up our own application server by just executing a couple of lines of code. Now in the very next video, we are going to take a look at how to create a full-blown REST API service by tapping into the power of MySQL to save some data based on the requests our application server gets. Now, if you wanna download the source code for today's video, you can find the link in the description below. If you enjoyed today's lesson, make sure to give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That's gonna be it for today. I will see you in the very next video. Bye-bye guys.